Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our 217faith.church services, the church that fits your schedule. In today's message, we want to look at the life of Deborah and her amazing feat of having such a great position to proclaiming both truth and freedom. Please remain with us and learn more. We are so glad to have you at 217faith.church. We believe in preaching a godly biblical perspective, putting others first, and living out a Christ-like faith in action. We humbly greet you in the name of our Lord and hope you will hear God's word today and be moved to put your Christian faith to work. We'd like to direct you to our ministry website, 217faith.church where you may find more previous, uh, find previous services and more teachings to aid you in your Christian walk. Also there, opportunities to put your faith into action. During this month of July, um, we are supporting St. Jude Medical Center. They help to find cures for childhood-related cancers. They are a wonderful organization, and we ask you to give as much as you can. As God blesses us, we must never forget to be a blessing to others. We want to be part, be part of sharing God's word with all and to all the children of those that are in need of our heavenly creator. And as he loves them and wants to live in faithful relationship with with them, please join us in giving directly to their website and your contribution will make a difference in a child's life today. Please visit our ministry website, 217faith.church for more details on how you can put your faith into action. Finally, while you are there, don't forget our resources for helping you through your Christian experience, available through our ministry website and wherever books are sold. We pray that God would bless your life with these experiences of these books, all for his honor and glory. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Judges, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now that Ehud was dead, so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned over Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his armies, was based in Herosheth, Hangoyim. Because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, they cried out to the Lord for help. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel 
at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abonaim, and from Kadesh to Naphtali, and said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go and take with you the 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to the Mount of Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and troops to the Kishon River to give him to your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I will not go. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. Because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. With just having, having had our Independence Day here in the United States, I feel that this next great woman of the Bible fits very well. You see, Deborah, who, uh, who is she? She was not only a judge, she was a poet, a military strategist, a prophet, singer and songwriter. Wow, quite impressive, don't you think? Especially if you think about how in those days, women were only allowed certain roles in society for the most part, you know, being a wife and a mother pretty much. The only other person who was both a prophet and a judge was Samuel. So she had a very distinctive title and importance in society as a Jewish woman. She is known as a teacher of the Torah, worked for the temple, as well as being the source of redemption for Israel, especially in those days when they were definitely going back to the evils that they did more and more each day. Deborah is also very well known for the great song that she wrote found in Judges chapter five. Now, this might not be a song that we all know nowadays, but in those times, it was a song that everybody knew and everybody looked forward to reading and hearing it. These rulers were called, um, judges were called Mispah, an office that traced back to the time of Moses when he appointed the assistants to help him resolve disputes among the Hebrews, which is one of the things that was mentioned in the passage that we wrote. So in Hebrew, um, when the disputes were happening with the Hebrews um, um, around the, in the time of Moses, Exodus chapter 18 to be exact, their practice was to seek guidance from God through prayer and meditation before making a ruling. So it wasn't like judges that we have nowadays where they go by the written law and what, what are the strict rules and by their own judgment, but it is by going to prayer and meditation before God, before making such a ruling for those grievances that were happening around their society. Therefore, many of these judges were also considered to be prophets who spoke a word from the Lord. They were proclaiming the word of God. You can even go as far as to say that the judges depended on God's insight and having the ability or that skill of discernment to say or rule the right way and not just using their own intelligence when doing so. This was definitely needed during that time that Deborah ruled, as we continually hear that the people of Israel were not walking according to God's will and plan. Now, the name that comes up a lot when you talk about or read about Deborah is Lapidot. 
And that, according to many scholars, wasn't just a name of her husband or even the name of the region, but it came to, um, it came to many people and many scholars understood to believe that this phrase, eshet lapedot, means woman of torches. I find that very interesting. So the wife of Lapidoth in Judges chapter four, verse four, it states that Deborah, wife of Lapidoth, and in parentheses, there are some places where it has Eshet Lapidoth. The rabbis derived Eshet Lapidoth from the word Lapid, meaning torch. And this phrase would therefore refer to what she did or the vocation that she had, which was preparing wicks for the tabernacle. Another tradition understands that Lapidot, as relating to her husband, who was an um, professional, professionally studied, or another word for it is unlettered, in that type of work. So she told him, come and I will make wicks for you, which then you can take to the tabernacle at Shiloh. This will make you, um, this will make you proper with the people. And then you will become the professional, professional and the world will come to you for your wicks. Deborah pre prepared these thick wicks that would give greater light. And these um, wicks were given to her husband and her husband would take them to the tabernacle, which earned him the title of Lapidot. So there you go. He brings light through the making of Deborah, of the wicks that Deborah made. Now, right away, I think woman of torches and I think of Lady, Lady Liberty because she's holding her torch high, you know, showing that bright light of freedom and liberty in this country. Now, this phrase literally mean, meant that Deborah's fiery personality, and I find it to be a great compliment, especially in the role that she has as a judge as a prophet and military leader. She might not have been soft-spoken and um, very quiet and meek, but she was very wise and she listened before she spoke. She waited for the opportunity to speak at the correct time. So not only was she wise, but she had that ability for discernment. Judge, uh, judges need discernment and need to share that discernment for the people and need to go fight for that truth, need to go looking for that truth. But Deborah wasn't only just that judge. She was also a military leader. And as a military leader, we, there aren't moments that we need to wait for freedom or for things to come to us. But that freedom needs to be fought for. It needs to, um, one needs to go get it. Just like as a passage we read speaks about, Barack said, if you don't go with me, I won't go. And so Deborah said, then I will go with you. So Deborah, not only did she have the wisdom, the discernment, and that fiery spirit to be that military strategist, but she had the drive. She had the drive for her people. She had the drive for the Israelites to be free and to be free from the, the powers and the controls that were over them. Now, we all know that it was due to how the Israelites weren't living according to what God had planned and God wanted for them. And so literally, they are handed over under control over 
or were another power. But Deborah was willing to go into battle as a military leader in order to gain back that freedom. Unfortunately, we have seen lately, and it isn't new under the sun, that people's freedoms are being sacrificed more and more. Yet it is something worth fighting for, something standing up for, standing up, up against tyranny that keeps us from what freedoms we are due. Yet it is very prevalent in our day and time that some people don't want to fight for freedom anymore. They just want to sit there and think that freedom should just be given to them. Yet that's just not how the world works. You see, God can make use of anyone who is willing to be his servant, to, is, to, to anyone who is willing to take that fight upon themselves, to say, this is my, not project, but this is what God has planned for me to do. And I will take it on. This is the cause that God has brought to my heart. And I'm going to see it through. These are the type of people that God is looking for and searching for every day. Especially during these times that they just seem so dark. And you're wondering, okay, God, are you coming back soon? Because I don't know if I want to see the rest of this pan out. God needs us to stand up, to not be silent, to speak up, to stand for what we believe in, to know that we have a purpose and a reason for God putting things into our hearts. So what is that passion that God has brought into your life? Just like the passion that Deborah had, she had many passions she had the passion of speaking, of proclaiming God's word to the people, not just when it comes to scripture, but when it comes to helping them with their arguments and um, disagreements that were happening around them. Deborah had the passion for songwriting, for poetry, for being a military leader. Now we can have many passions. The thing is, is are we standing firm in our faith like Deborah? Are we being obedient to God in our calling like Deborah? There are many things that we can question in our own life because we might, we might feel that we're inadequate or maybe, I don't know, people might think that I'm not the person that's supposed to be doing this. Deborah was a Jewish woman and had all these different titles, which I'm pretty sure stirred up a lot of controversy in that time. But that is where God had put her. God gave her that authority. God made it to where she can be that authority in that time, in that society. It didn't matter that she was a woman or a married woman. She was a prophet and judge, a military leader, a strong personality, and who knows what else they set her behind her back. But you know what? She did the work of God. She did what God had called her to do. And now look at her. Look at us. We're talking about her because of who she was and what great leaders we can be being a servant leader just as she was, proclaiming truth, proclaiming freedom. So God can use you to proclaim who he is, what he has in plan and in store for all of his people. So join me as we continue to look for what the purpose that we have in this time right now in this life that we have right now, as we don't know how much longer we have to get more and more of his children to his saving knowledge. 
I pray that you would seek God, not only during this prayer, but throughout this week, throughout this month, go read Judges and see for yourself, but especially on how God uses Deborah and how he continues to use her along the way. And so as we pray, I want you to surge deeply and to see what does God need from me? What can I do in these really dark times right now? How can I be a torch, that bright light in this darkened world? Because you know something is coming and it is evident that it is not a positive thing. So we need to be ready because whatever it is, whether it is um, tribulation or whether it is the time for us to go back home, then we must be ready and we must be that light to this world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word. We are grateful for the examples of people that have done your work and reminding us that we are just as adequate. We are just as important as those amazing people in the Bible that we read about all the time, that we, that we look up to and we put on a pedestal. But we know, Lord, that we can just be like them that we can be those servant leaders that speak truth, that are faithful, that are obedient, that are courageous, that will not sit and stand by and watch this world come under the tyranny of evil. But we will speak your word and we will be leaders in this fight, not only against freedom, but against evil. And we know, Father, that you will give us the purpose and the reason and you will lead us and guide us and give us that passion to move forward, to know when we need to speak to that person, when we need to go there. You give us a direction to be that leader that you want us to be. Help us to be courageous Give us that fire within us. Help us to hold that torch high and to breathe your word and to speak it and to not be ashamed of it. We are grateful, Lord, for this time that we can just uh, look at this amazing woman and to be reminded that freedoms aren't cheap. There is a sacrifice that must be given in order to have that freedom. As we all know, the freedom of death from sin. Because of your son, we are free to love and worship you, to come home to you if we truly believe that we have been saved, that we have been free from that slavery of sin. So help us, Lord. And we thank you. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are so grateful to have had you join us in this service. We pray that you will be motivated to put your faith in God into action. So please continue to visit our website, 217faith.church. See us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and just help us to continually spread the word share, click the notifications. God's calling continually humbles our, us in our life to preach his message of hope, love, and invitation. So please join us again, and together we can reach more who surely need this welcoming word of the grace of God today. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his face to you and grant you peace. So until next time, go in the full assurance that God loves you very much. And he longs for you to be one of his amazing servant leaders. And he wants you to lift your fiery torch and bring light to this world, proclaiming truth and freedom on a daily basis.
May God bless you.